Hi HVCers, this is Valiant. He's a 10 year old off track thoroughbred. His registered name with the US Jockey Club is Mr. Swagger, but we think that's a little silly. So we like to call him Valiant or Prince Valiant. He really likes to roll in the mud. As you can see, he's uh, really good at it. So we thought we'd take you along on how we uh, groom him when he decides to be a little bit of a mud monster. So we first start with his brushes. He's got this handy dandy little bag here that we keep handy. And we have, okay, these are called hands-on gloves. So these are like special grooming gloves. You can use them for horses. You can also use them for dogs and cats. And they're really cool. You put them on and then they act like little massagers. They got all this, this gross stuff on. Oh, he says, he says, that feels really nice when you scratch my neck. See, he's putting his head up and says, oh, thank you. They got a little off. Why don't you put your ears forward and say hello to all the nice people, Valiant, huh? Hey, Robin, hey, when yeah. I'm working around a horse, should I run around and push him in the butt and try and do this a lot? No, you shouldn't. He Why? Doesn't, he doesn't like that because he's oh, a horse. Okay, <laughs> I guess I'll just brush him like this then. And you can see when he turns his head and tips it up like that, he says, oh my goodness, that feels so nice. I was so itchy. He says, thank you, Leslie. He's leaning in. Look at all that dirt. Oh, even on the face. And the nice thing about those hands-on gloves is you can really rub them nice and firmly with your hands and get all that gross dirt off. See how much better that looks? You can run your hands all the way down their legs. You can get all in all the different little bumps and areas where their joints are. And it's nice and gentle. And get all that grossness off. And while Leslie works on that, I'm going to show you our other secret weapon. We're going to go to Valiant's stall. You see he's got a little rain jacket. He's repping his HVC Llama raincoat. And we have this cool stuff called laser sheen. And basically what this does, you spray it on them and they're really dusty like this. Do a nice little misting all over his coat. We hang that up to keep things organized and off the floor. And we grab a nice soft body brush. And this has nice soft bristles. And we just run it along their coat and see how all that dust is coming off. Maybe Leslie can hold the phone since we can all get the I full will of try. <laughs> Need a nice long stroke to go in the direction his hair is growing. And this just kind of lifts off all of that dirt that Leslie just kind of scraped off with those hands-on gloves. You could also do that with what we call a curry comb, which we have right here. It's kind of similar texture to those gloves. And you would run that along the dirty spots in their coat in a nice circle. And it would kind of do the same thing or loosen all that dirt up. Robin, why is it important to groom a horse? Like, why, why should we do it? Because wild horses don't get groomed, right? Well, wild horses don't get groomed, no. And when they don't get groomed, they build up oils and all kinds of stuff in their coat that helps keep them waterproof. But when we take care of horses and we ride them and we brush them, we give them raincoats, we want to get all this dirt and mud off of their coat to keep them from getting things like rain rot or other yucky coat conditions. It's Ew, what's rain rot? Rain rot is a fungus that grows on the horse's coat. When it gets wet, it doesn't have a chance to dry out. Ugh. It is kind of gross. And it can be itchy and uncomfortable for them. So what would happen if I didn't groom my horse before I rode it and put a saddle on? Well, then it would be like if you went and played at the beach and you got sand in between your toes and you try to put your flip flops on and you're walking and it really hurts. Mm, I hate that. Excuse me, mister. So why is he doing that? Is he angry? He's just impatient. He wants me to give him a treat, or he wants to go back to his stall to eat his hay. Is that impatience one or impatience two? <laughs> I think it's impatience one. <laughs> and also when we groom our horses, it gives us a chance to look them over and see if he has, maybe when he's out in the woods, did he pick up a tick? Or does he have a cut from playing with his friend out in the pasture? Or is he sore anywhere? Do I run my hand along his back? Does he act like that hurts him anywhere? So it's just important to brush them so you get to know how they're doing, what they're feeling like, and also to keep them clean if we are going to ride them, to 
makes it as packed. It doesn't make it itchy or uncomfortable. And I'm just going to go into the curry comb, see if he's leaning into it. Why do you have him tied up like that in the middle of the barn? So he doesn't walk away. <laughs> if he was loose, he could just wander around and do whatever he wanted. And it would be not only not great to have a horse wandering loose, but it also wouldn't be safe. What's he doing right now with his mouth? I don't know. I can't see. Oh, it looked like he was trying to bite a fly off his leg because horses don't have thumbs. <laughs> that very well could be what he was doing. So now that I've got all loosened up on this side, I'm going to go back with my lazy team. Just spray him a little bit all over. Poor Spooty. Lips all that dirt off. Now what we're going to do after this is we're going to give him a bath because he's very yucky and he likes to roll in the mud all the time. Do horses like getting baths? Some do, some don't. Johnny doesn't love it, but he's learning to be patient when we give him a bath and stand still when we spray him with the hose. A lot of times horses, especially thoroughbreds, when they work on the racetrack, they get really hot and they get cooled down by having buckets of water poured on them after the race. Those Fun. Thoroughbreds are really used to getting wet and they don't mind it. They kind of like it. And some thoroughbreds don't really want it. He's one of those ones. But every horse is an individual. So now we're looking a little bit cleaner. So we got some stones on the face here. Why did you brush him if you're just going to go take him for a bath? Well, we're kind of scraping off the top layer of grossness. This horse is very dirty. Yeah, he was. So the next thing I'm going to grab from our handy dandy tool kit is a hoof pick. When we use this to clean out their feet, it's kind of like cleaning out under your fingernails. So you have this piece that scrapes all the mud out and this piece that kind of helps brush it away. It's a really stiff brush. So does that hurt them? Not at all. Like I said, it's like clipping your fingernails and cleaning out under them if you're gentle. So I like to let them know that what I'm going to ask, horses are trained to pick up their feet when you ask them when they're young. It's part of training them. You run your hand on the back of their leg and get a little squeeze right there. He knows what I'm doing. And he's got these bell boots on. So he's wearing horseshoes. So these help keep the horseshoes on his feet. Why do people put shoes on horses? Well, some horses have sensitive feet, or some horses may have problems with their feet, and horseshoes can help make them feel more comfortable or can help correct the way their feet are growing, they're growing improperly. So Valiant has very sensitive feet. If he doesn't wear horseshoes, he gets abscesses, which are kind of like blisters on their feet. Ow. He gets really ouchy and sore, and he's not comfortable or happy. But if he's wearing horseshoes, they just give him a little extra support and make him feel a little bit better, make him more comfortable. Some horses have really good strong feet. Some horses can grow really good strong feet. Some horses just didn't win the lottery in the foot compartment, and that's this guy. Are those Nikes? They're not Nikes, unfortunately. Now, sometimes he doesn't like it when we pick up this back foot. But he today... He's a little stressed, but today he's actually being really, really good. He Tommy knows he's on camera. Being a good boy, Valiant. Very good boy. Very good. Why doesn't he have shoes on his back feet? Well, see, here we go. This is what he does when he's uncomfortable. Is he's saying, no, thank you. I don't want you to hold my foot anymore. But I'm going to say, that's too bad. I need to hold your foot. I need to clean it. Look at all this dirt. He doesn't wear shoes on his back feet because his back feet aren't as outy as his front feet. Yeah, his back feet are a little bit tougher. Another so, interesting fact is that horses carry most of their weight on their front feet. So their front feet go through a lot more use than their back feet. Not too. So horses will run their hooves down quicker on their fronts than they will on their backs. So a lot of horses who need shoes on their front hooves can get by just fine without having them on their back. Mm -hmm. It's also safer to have them in a pasture with other friends mm -hmm. because imagine if someone kicked you with a metal cleat, probably wouldn't feel too good. Be like kicking some of the cleats on. Yeah. Catchy. And horses don't talk the way we do. So, their idea of telling one of their friends to leave them alone can sometimes look a little bit rough and tumble to us, but horses understand that language just fine. They use their body language to tell each other to move around. And sometimes they're just playing and they're roughhousing and they get a little too rough and they don't realize it. Is that why we call it horse play? Ho ho, it might ho, be. Ho 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 ho. LOL. There's a good boy down. Nice clean feet. Should we check back in with our HVCers when we get to the bath? We absolutely should. All right. We might get the phone wet when we go to give them a bath, and we don't want that. See you later. Thanks for joining us, Brushing Valiant.